What's up guys, GD here. So in today's video, I wanted to show you guys how you can automate your Axpex 2 using MIDI and your DAW or DAW as we all like to call it, which is going to be Cubase Pro 10.5 in this case. Now, before we begin, I want to quickly mention that in case you're enjoying the content and the videos on this channel and you want to support me and the channel, the link to my PayPal is always in the description box below. All right, so we've got a lot of things to cover. So without wasting any more time, let's jump in right away and let's get started. All right, guys, so before we actually jump into Cubase and start looking at how to control and do some automation using MIDI, we need to understand a few basic things first. So we're going to start off with the front panel of the AxeFX2 and we're going to cover a couple of important settings which really, really need to be understood. So don't skip these parts. I'm going to pretty much put timestamps in the description box below for you to navigate around the video. But you know go through these sections these are important to understand as well so the first thing you want to do is when you see the front panel of the AxeFX2 you want to tap on the IO button which is the input output button and it's going to bring up this menu uh, note that these settings are not available inside the Axe Edit. so what you want to do is scoot over to the MIDI tab there and it's going to bring up a bunch of settings now these are pretty much almost default to what the AxeFX2 ships with but you can change these to whatever settings you want but for the sake of this video try to follow along with the same settings and you can experiment later so midi channel you want to keep it to one midi through is off uh, program change is on and uh, you know mapping mode is none and also when i scroll down display offset is set to zero which is which basically means that the presets are gonna start from the number 000, as you saw in the beginning of this video, and uh, then it's gonna increment by one. So it's pretty much how AxeFX2 works. So, and the next tab is basically the CTRL tab. Now, this is a very interesting place to figure out the values that you need to send as MIDI inputs to control different parts of the AxeFX2. And you can see you can pretty much control everything, uh, like the external controllers, we'll come to that. So 16 and 17 really interesting you can bypass the whole axe fix you can activate the tuner you can even control the metronome to be honest uh looper metronome and then when you come down here you will see scene select which is 34 this is an important number to keep in mind and this is what we're going to use to change the scenes as well in the axe fx2 so I would recommend that you go through these settings in your spare time and, you know, find out what number controls what. But for the sake of this video, this is how much you're going to cover. Next, I'm going to talk briefly about my signal chain. This is also important because a lot of you have questions as to how I'm routing my guitar into my computer and the AxeFX. So I am routing my guitar, which is a Music Man GP15 in this case. I am going through a cable directly to the AxeFX, the front of the AxeFX, which is the instrument in, and from the axe effects i'm going stereo balanced out into my moto m4 audio interface which is a really really good interface and then from the axe fx2 also i'm running a usb out from the back of the unit directly into my computer and that's where we're going to have most of the action happening we're going to send midi signals through the usb uh, channel and kind of control the axe effects using the usb port so it's important that you have this setup as well obviously if you're running axe edit you pretty much have the usb setup in there so you're pretty much sorted in that way Next, let's quickly cover the preset that we have. Now, this is a very simple preset. I've got four scenes in there, uh, two amps because they're gonna switch amps as well. And I'm gonna talk about uh, different scenes and explain to you what I have in each scene. First amp is a Marshall JDM 45. The second one is a Brit JVM, uh, Marshall JVM OD2 Orange. Uh, so sort of crunch and high gain sort of a setting. So the scene one is more of a crunch sound and this is how it sounds. Now the settings and everything doesn't really matter for this video so we're going to skip all of that stuff and then let's jump over to scene 2. Scene 2 is basically uh, JVM as I called out earlier, slightly more gain, this is how it sounds. <laughs> Pretty good, crunchy sounding sort of a tone there. Anyways, so third scene is nothing but the same as scene two, but I've got a flanger on in there so that, you know, we can control the flanger and I'll show you how you can bypass it as well. This is more of an advanced thing, 
but the flanger is going to be used for a small part so this is how it sounds That's pretty much scene three and scene four is nothing but a war pedal in there, flangers off and the amp is now in a Y mode which has more gain and more EQ settings uh, slightly different from the X mode and there is a delay added in as well. So this is how it sounds. The wah is kind of set to a external one controller and most of you know that I don't have a foot controller, so I can't control this right now. And we're gonna look at how we can control the wall using MIDI, which is gonna be pretty interesting. But out of the box, wall is pretty much gonna be off, and this is how it sounds. Not too exciting, but that's how it is right now. And uh, now let's jump over to Cubase and let's do some MIDI action and automation. All right, guys, so I have got Cubase Pro 10.5 in front of me and I'm running on Windows as well. I've got a basic setup of a project here, which I can quickly walk you through. I've got three tracks in there, one of them, the first one being the monitor, which I used as a monitor for my guitar coming into the guitar. The second is a drum track, which I've created using a you know VST, which I use quite a lot. It's a free VST, it's called Empty Power Drum Kit 2. Really, really handy VST to create you know quick grooves it's got a bunch of sample grooves already in there easy drag and drop let me know in the comments if you want me to do a detailed video on this one it's really really good to use i use it quite a lot to be honest the next one is a guitar track which we'll be recording to so pretty simple i'm going to quickly play you the groove it's got a bunch of hi-hats going for a couple of bars and then a groove so i'm going to play from here So yeah, pretty simple groove happening in there. So what we're gonna do to start off with is obviously add a MIDI track first. Now, if you set up your Axe FX using the USB drivers that you downloaded from the Fractal Audio website and you're using Cubase like me, you'll pretty much have Axe FX to uh, MIDI out already present as a uh, selectable device in the MIDI options. So we're gonna use that. If not, make sure you have the right drivers and I'll link in an article which allows you, which shows you how you can set up Axe FX2 as a MIDI unit as well. So I'm gonna name this MIDI track as Axe FX2 and in the output section of the MIDI, I'm gonna select Axe FX2 MIDI out. And inputs we don't care about, so I'm gonna say it not connected because we are sending MIDI out and not receiving MIDI in. The important thing to know here is that you wanna be on channel one, which is what I showed in the Axe FX2 front panel as well. This will allow the DAW to communicate with the Axe FX2 unit as well. All right, so we're gonna do a couple of things. First things first, we're gonna try and change the preset and uh, the bank as well at bar number two. And at bar number 10, we're gonna change a scene over there uh, inside the preset. Now, I would recommend use scenes to and switch between scenes when you're using automation because what I've seen that when I use presets and I switch between presets, there is a bit of an audio lag and the kind of the audio kind of drops down as well. So it's always recommended that you use scenes. This is primarily because the grid is already initialized and all the blocks are already initialized. So it's very quick to swap between scenes. So what we want to do, as I said, is change the bank and change the scene, uh, change the preset number here uh, to the first preset, which you want to use uh, at bar number two. So before we do that, the first thing you want to do, obviously with the MIDI track is create your event. And usually when you use MIDI, you double tap on it and it brings up the editor and you do your stuff over here. But that's not what we're going to use here. We're going to use something called as a list editor, which is available in the uh, Cubase from this menu over here. You go to MIDI and then you say open list editor. Now this might vary from DAW to DAW. So do your little bit of Google and figure out how to do this in your DAW. But in Cubase, you do MIDI and say open list editor. The moment you do that, it's gonna bring up this panel over here, which has a bunch of columns here, and it's got the timeline here, and you can send different commands using this particular tool over here. So what you wanna do first is, as I said, change the bank. Now, why do you wanna change the bank? Now, the Axe FX2 has three banks, bank A, bank B, and bank C, and this is important stuff, so do hear me out. So each bank has exactly 128 presets in there, so bank A has 000 to 127 because we're starting from zero. Bank B has 128 to 255 and so on and so forth. Check the fractal documentation 
or even explore around in axe edit and you can see how you can switch banks to be honest so when you want to switch to a preset in bank b let's say you want to go to preset number 129 you will have to switch your bank if you are on a different bank to get to that preset first otherwise you will not be able to switch to that so in our case we are already on bank uh, a which is zero in this case and um, bank b is one and that's the way it's numbered so but we're going to still send that you know controller change here to just change the bank and swap it to zero but before i do any of that let's change the preset to preset number four or anything else because we want to see this happening in action so first thing you want to do as i said is send a controller change this when you tap and click over here it's going to create a small event and this is going to be a cc0 which is the bank selection change and data two is your value where you can set it to zero, one or two, depending on which bank you want to go to. Zero is going to be bank A, as I said. So you want to go to bank number zero, which is going to be the first bank. And then what we want to do is send the preset change as well, which is going to be a different type of event. You're going to select program change from here. And then at the same bar, you're going to make another small event and that's going to send the program change. Now in program change, data one is the value you want to care about and not data two. Uh, maybe I should have covered this earlier, but the CC value is the different commands that you can see in the Axfix2 controller section as well, which I showed you earlier. So program change, I want to send data as one, which is going to be the first preset in bank A, which is it sounds a little confusing, but hear me out. It's always one minus of what you set it to. So if I set it to three, it's going to shift to preset number two. So in, in case, in this case, it's set to one, it's obviously going to jump to preset number zero. So once I do that, and I'm, we are on preset number four at the moment. So when I play this, you will see that in the front panel, it kind of jumps from preset number four to preset number zero. So I'm going to play. As you can see in this case, it shifted from preset number four to preset number zero, which is what we wanted, which is really, really awesome. So with that done, I'm gonna play a little bit, but remember at bar 10, I'm gonna face a challenge because I have to change the scene and go to a different scene. So let's hear how we are sounding at the moment. So at bar number 10, I want the preset to change to a heavier scene, which is scene zero number two, as I explained earlier. So in this case, to change a scene, you want to send in a different controller command, which is CC34, as I had talked about earlier in the start of the video. So when you go here and you create an event and you say CC0, instead of CC0, you want to change it and say CC34. That's going to be changed to breadth LSP. And what we want to send in data zero is the scene we want to go to. Now, in this case, it's a little different because zero is scene one and one is going to be scene two and two is going to be scene three. So you want to send one, which is going to change the scene to basically the second scene in the list. So let's check that out. I'm going to go here and I'm going to play and let's see if it changes the scene to scene number two. As you can see, it did jump here and as I paused it, it jumped back to scene one. So I'm gonna play from start and let's see if it switches the scene at the right spot. Now that's awesome. It did switch the scene to scene two in this case, which is what we wanted. And by the way, if you're enjoying the video, a sub to the channel would be really, really awesome. And while you're doing that, make sure you smash that like button as well. It does really help. Now at bar 18, I want to switch to scene number three. So I'm going to go ahead and create another event over there. And again, change this to CC34. And in this case, I'm going to send the data to as two because I want to jump to scene number three. So now when you play that part again, and remember scene three was the one which we had the flanger on there with this. So I'm going to play from here. 
So it's going to jump from scene one to scene two and then scene three as well. That's pretty awesome. So it did switch the scene as you saw and we had the flanger on. Hopefully you heard that. But but let's say now I want to do something else. I want to go a little advanced and I want to switch off the flanger. Let's say at bar number 20. Now this flanger, I'm using flanger one and I want to bypass it at bar number 20, which is done by CC56. If you check the MIDI section and the controller section on the AxeFX2 front panel. So I'm going to create another small event over here. And I'm going to change this to CC56. And remember, I'm using the flanger 1 and not flanger 2. Flanger 2 bypass is different. And now in this case, I'm going to send it a value of 0, which is going to cause it to kind of switch off at that point in time. So let's go ahead and I'm going to switch to the layout view here so that you can see uh, what's happening. Hopefully you heard that. So the flanger got off at bar number 20, which is absolutely excellent. That's what we wanted. So I'm going to click out and come out of the preset. Now that's pretty much how you do the different changes of different blocks. You can even do even more advanced stuff like, uh, you know, switch on two blocks at the same time or change presets and then switch blocks, whatever thing suits your need at that particular point in time. But as I said, keep in mind, switching presets is not a very good idea because there is definitely an audio lag that I hear, but switching scenes definitely makes things a lot more easier and smoother, to be honest. Now we're going to look at something really, really advanced as to how to control the AxeFX wall using the automation that I just showed you. Now in this case, it's going to be slightly different from what we covered earlier. So we're not going to use the uh, list editor at all. We're going to use something else in this case, and uh, which is going to be similar to sending commands to the AxeFX2 unit on, for that external controller that we've set it up for. So quickly showing you in AxeFX um, Axe Edit, when I go to scene number four, I've got the WAR set up as uh, extern one, which is CC16, if I remember correctly, from the MIDI set of commands that I saw in the controller. So for, obviously we've got other commands going on in there. So what we want to do is first get rid of all of that because we don't need all of that because we want to be on scene four throughout. So I'm going to open list editor up and I'm going to get rid of all of these one by one. We don't want the scene to change at all in this case for us. What we want to do is change the controller using the automation that I just showed you, but we're going to do it in a different way. In this case, we're going to use some automation from Cubase. So I'm going to turn on read automation here, not write, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say, uh, say show automation. Now this by default is going to open up the volume track here. We don't want to automate the volume. We definitely want to automate something else. So you're going to say more over here and inside all CC, you're going to go ahead and select CC 16 is what we chose as the you know, external one controller, which we saw in the start of this video. You can refer to the list of values that you see in the controller section in the front panel of the AxeFX2 inside the IO section. So I'm going to select CC 16 and I'm going to select modulation from here, make this a little big. And now what you want to do is just, I'm going to mute all the other tracks because we don't want to hear them. Uh, just have just the, I'm going to show you how the wall works. What you can do here is just create a sort of a curve that you want the wall to be. Remember the highest position, the maximum value is the wall all the way open and the lowest position is the wall all the way closed. closed. So select the edit tool here, the draw tool to be honest, and then start drawing, keeping your mouse down and draw whatever shape you want to draw. So let's do this, let's do this. We're doing up and down because we want the wall pedal to kind of go up and down. 
and that should do the trick. So you've got a sort of a curve going, which is going to pretty much open and close the valve, which is typically what you would do with a foot controller, foot pedal, to be honest, or expression pedal, to be honest. So I'm going to make sure that I'm on scene four. So let's go to axe edit and see I am on scene four or not. I'm definitely on scene four. Nope, I'm back to scene one. Let's go to scene four. And I have the wall here. And uh, what I want to show you is how the wall is changing. So I'm going to select the wall. And you're going to pretty much refer to the front controller, front panel of the XFX2. And I'm going to play something and I'm going to see if the wall changes with this. So start it. Anyways, you get the idea. So that's pretty much it. That's how you can control the WAW expression pedal as well using the AxeFX2 MIDI automation, which is pretty awesome to be honest. I didn't know about it and I think I'm gonna use it quite a lot for doing my solos, which have a WAW. I've been shying away from them to be honest. All right, that's pretty much it. That's how you would use MIDI and automation and control your AxeFX2. Did you guys like this video? If you enjoyed the content, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you aren't subscribed already, I don't know what you're waiting for. Please go ahead and do subscribe to the channel and make sure you ring that bell because you will get notified of all such videos coming forward. I do plan to put a lot of more content like this apart from the Tone Quest presets that I've been putting out. So make sure you stay tuned for all the upcoming videos. And until I see you guys in the next video, make sure you guys stay safe. Keep rocking guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.